We need to know about two special functions that we're going to come up against quite a lot in advanced higher. And these are the exponential and logarithmic functions. Now, we've touched on them at higher level mathematics, but at this level, what we need to do is we not only need to be able to understand the derivatives and the integrals of them, but we also have to be able to prove them and understand where they come from. So at advanced higher, we have to take up a little step and up a notch from higher. Now, we should know by now that any function of the form f of x equals a to the power of x, where a belongs to the set of real numbers, is called an exponential function. Now, for any function of this form, if we were to plot it, there'd be two key points we want to mark on the graph. The first one being the y-intercept, so when x equals 0. Now, f is 0 for any exponential function is always going to equal 1. So the graph will always cross the y-axis at the point 1. If you look here, I've got several different ones drawn. All of them cross at y equal to 1. If we then look at when x is equal to 1, then f of 1 equals a. So every single one of the graphs will have a point 1, comma, a on it. So if we looked at this one here, 2x, if I was to say to you that x equals 1, then y for this one would equal 2 to the power of 1, which is 2. So it would have the point 1, 2 on it, which is right there. So that would be the one, point 1, comma, 2. And the same is for the other one. So 4 to the power of x, if x is 1, cuts it 4. 7 to the power of x, if x is 1, you can just see at the top of the graph that's equal to 7. So these are two key points we have to make sure we always plot on the graph. If we're ever asked to plot it, then we need to make sure of this. Now we know what the derivative of an exponential function is, or we should remember that hopefully from higher. What we want to be able to do here is be able to prove how we calculate the derivative and prove where it comes from. So let's start by imagining that our original function f of x we're going to set equal to an exponential function of the form a to the power of x. Now we know the derivative f dashed of x equals the limit as h tends towards 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. So we know that's the form. So what we'll do now is substitute in the original form here for our f of x and what we end up getting is the limit as h tends towards 0 of this part here. So this time it would be a to the x plus h take away a to the x all divided by h. Now, a to the x plus h, if we remember the rules of indices, a to the x plus h, that's the equivalent of a to the x times a to the h. So what I've got in this top is I've got both terms having an a to the x in it. So what I'm going to do is take that out as a common factor. I've then got the limit as h tends towards 0 of a to the x times a to the h minus 1 over h. And what I'm going to do is split that off into two separate calculations and do the limit as h tends towards 0 of ax times the limit as h tends towards 0 of a to the h minus 1 over h. Now this first part here, the limit as h tends towards 0 of a to the x, well there's no dependence on h in that. So we know that that is quite simply equal to a to the x. The part that we need to wor worry about and look at is this section here. So the limit as h tends towards 0 of a to the h minus 1 over h. Now the value of this limit is dependent on the value of a. Whatever the value of a is, that is going to help us to determine where the limit of our function is. Now if we look at this, and we look at the example where x equals 0, what that means is that this limit will give the gradient at the point 0, 1. So what that means is f dashed of 0 equals the limit as h tends towards 0 of a to the x, a to the h 
sorry, minus 1 over h. So we're looking at that. So the gradient varies from 0 to infinity, and the number e, so our specialist function e, that's defined as the value of a for which the gradient is 1. So that's the value of a for which the gradient is 1. So what that means is if we look at the specialist function e, that means that the limit is h tends towards 0 of e to the h minus 1 over h equals 1. So that's if we're looking at the specialist function e to the h. So what we're then going to do is what we're going to say is we're going to rewrite it and say, right, therefore, we're going to look at this specialist point here where we're looking for the gradient of 1 at this point here where x is equal to 0, so where it cuts the y-axis. What that means is if we set f of x equal to e to the x, now this is still an exponential function, all we're doing is taking the working that we've done here and setting a specific value of a because it's dependent on that value in order to give us the gradient. So what I'm going to do is reset f of x equal to e to the x, and then I can rewrite my derivative f dashed of x equals e to the x times this. So times the limit as h tends towards 0 of e to the h minus 1 over h. What we know, and we've just stated, is that e to the h minus 1 over h is the part where this the derivative and the gradient are equal to 1. So this part here, that equals 1. So I'm then able to say is f dashed of x just quite simply equals e to the x. So we've been able to prove that if f of x is equal to e to the x, then that there is true. All right. So that's what we have to do and what we have to look at when we're proving the exponential. And it's just remembering those steps. Standard form a derivative for any generic value, but then knowing that it's dependent on a, so start looking at a specific value where the gradient is equal to the one where it cuts the y-axis, and use our e to the x, or in this case here, e to the h, because that's the variable we've got at that point. If we then start to think about the logarithmic function and how we can look at the derivative of that, one of the key things we have to remember is that the natural logarithm is the inverse function of the exponential function. So if y equals e to the x, then x equals ln y. Or for just some generic exponential function, if y equals a to the x, then x equals log to the base a of y. Now one thing we can use is we know that if we have e to the ln x, that just equals x. We can use this fact and exploit it in order to be able to prove the derivative of the logarithm. Now, if I take the derivative of both sides, d by dx of e to the ln x, I know that that's equal to d by dx of x. Now, the derivative of this, if I look at the left-hand side, we know that it's just equal to e to the ln x. It's then going to be times the derivative of the power d by dx of ln x. Right hand side here, d by dx of x, I know that that's equal to 1. If I then start to move things about, I've got e to the ln x. If I divide over here, what that means is I can write the left hand side as d by dx of ln x equals 1 over e to the ln x. Now if I have 1 over e to the ln x, I know e to the ln x is equal to x, so from that, I can prove that d by dx of ln x is equal to 1 over x. So the derivative of the natural logarithm ln x is quite simply equal to 1 over x. So there you go. We've got the derivatives of our natural logarithm and our exponential function e to the x. We've proven it. We have to be able to use it. So I'm going to show you an example of these. Let's imagine we find the derivative of y equals 2e to the 3x. So I've got y equals 2e to the 3x, so I then know that dy by dx is going to equal the original function, so 2e to the 3x, times the derivative, d by dx, of the power, which in this case is 3x. So the derivative of 3x is just 3, so I can say fine, so it's equal to 6e 
to the 3x. Quite nice, simple, and straightforward. Let's imagine I want to find the derivative of ln of 3x. So if I set y equals ln of 3x, let's imagine I'm going to substitute in u equal to 3x. If I substitute u, u equal to 3x, I know that du by dx is equal to 3, and I can rewrite y as being equal to ln of u. Now from this, I want to know dy by dx, and in order to get that, I have to rewrite it as dy by du times du by dx. So I have to write it in that format there. So what that now means is that I've got to get dy by du, which I know then is equal to 1 over u from previously, and I've got to multiply this by du by dx, so I've got to times it by 3. If I then substitute back in for u, I get 1 over 3x times 3, which if you look at that and then cancel it and simplify, is just equal to 1 over x. So it's using these rules we're able to calculate derivatives of logarithms and exponentials, follow them through and then be able to utilise them in future calculations when we're working with them.